Arguably the most anticipated matchup in the bracket so far, Matt Cawthon versus Rand Althor, the two heavyweights from the Wheel of Time. You all know the seven categories we have, origin, development, role, interest for the reader, relationships, who would win in a fight, and who would do better in the other's world. Yes, this is going to be a difficult one because I have a lot of love for both of these characters, but that being said, let's jump straight into the first category, origin. This is actually both of these characters' weakest suit by a lot. Rand is the chosen one fantasy trope to a T. There is not one divergence from that trope at all. His origin of being a farmer from a small village picked up by a wise wizard and set on his way, and a tragedy kind of strikes at the beginning. It's been done again and again and again and again. But it's done magnificently well. One of the best modern interpretations of that classic fantasy trope, unarguably, period. It's just that it's not that original. Matt, on the other hand, doesn't really get much of an origin, now hear me out. At the beginning of the series, we are focusing a lot on Rand. It's almost the entire point of the first book. We don't even leave his perspective, except for the loose there in scene at the beginning. And while that's happening, we, we get a great interpretation of a trope origin for Rand. Matt, on the other hand, just kind of tags along. He's the scoundrel of the town, we learned that. Then he kind of gets possessed, so his origins never really covered much. We don't really get a dynamic with his family. We don't really get anything except for he's the scoundrel of the town in his relationships with Perrin and Rand. And we kind of, by default, have to fall back on Rand getting this point. Well, he's not a weak contender for the origin category, Matt's just really a no contender for the origin category. It's just not focused on for him. We know what it is, but it's never explored in the series much beyond just stating what he is. Now stand aside, worthy adversary. Tis but a scratch. Now we have development, and both of these guys reign king for development in all of modern fantasy, I think. They almost share the crown. Matt develops from that village scoundrel, who we don't even get much of an origin for, to a warlord, multiple life living, lucky man who just captures the heart of every reader. He is masterfully executed throughout the series. And I am of the opinion that when Brandon Sanderson wrote for him, he really did do a good job. I know there's some readers who don't think so, but I think Brandon Sanderson finished off his development wonderfully and, and did manage to capture Matt's attitude without maybe capturing his tone if that makes sense. Then we have Rand's development, which is pretty much everything Matt's done plus one. He gets a lot more time devoted to his development. He gets a just a next level up development, going from farm boy to demigod, essentially. Or maybe just god, depending how you interpret the last scene. Rand goes through so many intense stages. He goes through so much. And while, yes, Matt goes through a lot, too. Holy crap does Matt go through a lot. Rand... Just everything just a little bit worse. And this comes down to when they have their incredibly charming kind of measuring contest at the end of the series. It's so funny to see these two go at it, to see who's kind of been through more. And Matt's snarky last comment, of course, just fit wonderfully. And it's one of the reasons I think Brandon Sanderson really captured these two so well, is how well he handled their reunion. So yes, I, I do think while Matt might be able to make it seem like he's had more of a development going on, Rand really does take this point and is having a firm lead at the beginning of this matchup. Victory is mine! Now we have role they play in the world they are in. And while Matt's role is monstrous in fantasy, and someone who really shapes the world in significant ways, taking down Kool'idin, Forsaken, Golom, uniting nations, Rand's the mother dragon reborn. He is someone who shapes the world literally. He is the reincarnation of a man who broke the world. He now politically has more sway than any other character since Ardor Hawkwing, and he commands larger armies and more power in terms of Ra Sayadeen than anyone seen since Luz Theron and maybe more. Rand is an evolution, something that is just next level, maybe not even seen since the Age of Legends, and you have to go ahead and give Rand the point here. He is just the dragon reborn, and I should have just said that and it could have been the point. Hey Lord, that in thy mercy... <laughs> 
Come on, then. Now we have interest for the reader. This comes largely down to taste, because there are people who find Matt more compelling due to his raw charisma throughout the series, and some people who are more interested in the plot lines with Rand. When it comes down to a more objective view, you have to lean towards the plot lines a little bit more, because it's not that Rand is not written as well as Matt, it's just his character is not as charismatic, so following him at times is not as charming. It's more driven to the story, something that is more by default inherent interesting. Especially the politics and, and, and relationships with Rand. If you really are interested in those, they capture you throughout the series. And while the Wheel of Time is certainly big enough that those who do not like following Rand's storyline as much have plenty to grab onto, it's those who enjoy Rand who really get the full experience of the Wheel of Time, in my opinion, because he's so integral to everything. And you can argue that a lot of the interest that goes to other characters is because of Rand. His being, his entity, raises the stakes for everyone. So by default, he gets a little bit of points from everybody in the series when it comes to interest. For that reason, Rand takes the interest point as well. You are indeed brave tonight, but the fight is mine! Oh, I don't know, eh? And now we have relationships. I am not a huge fan of Matt's relationships. I've made that clear. I think him and Tuon are fine. I think him and Oliver are annoying, and I'm not I don't like child characters, period. I've said that a few times. Matt's best dynamic with anyone, in my opinion, is his men and Tom Marilyn, which gives him a big leg up when it comes to relationship to me, because Tom Marilyn's my favorite character, and I love these two's time together in the early stages of the series, it helps shapes Matt as a man, and it helps us explore Tom Marilyn as a character. I like these two a lot, but when it comes to relationship, Rand again has the whole series backing him in a very serious way. Just taking into account his relationships with his enemies, it's bigger than anything Matt has. His dynamic with Lanfear, Ishamael, then Moradin, the Dark One, every other Forsaken, his conflict with Ravine, everything there is monumental. Then you have his love triangle square, and that's very well executed, as well as it could be. I have my issues with it, but I think it's really good overall. Then there's his relationships with the Aiel, every culture he encounters, himself, the madman in his head, Luz Theron, his destiny, all of this comes together to make Rand one of the most interesting characters when it comes to relationship in the history of fantasy. So once again, Rand takes the relationship point. Just a flesh wound. Now we have who would win in a fight. Now, Rand has a luck factor as well as Matt. Not nearly as big as Matt's, but he has one. It's there. He's Talviran, maybe the strongest ever. Matt has Talviran and something else in addition to that. His luck is extreme, but is it extreme enough to stop him from dying from a man who has sent thousands of weaves out to kill an army multiple hundreds of thousands Trollocs strong? No, his luck is not that good. In fact, we have seen Matt die before by the pattern. It's arguable that his luck brought him back to life. That is debatable, though, and for sure not confirmed, so I'm going to come to the conclusion that Matt can die if the odds are against him enough, and Rand would certainly, if anyone does, have the ability to take Matt down, though he'd probably hate himself doing it. Of course, I'm not taking into account these guys' friendship, because if it was, they just wouldn't fight under any circumstances. But in a realistic view, yes, if they had to fight, they were forced to by some outer entity making them, Rand would certainly have what it takes, even starting at close range, to kill Matt. While Matt might be more skilled with his Ashandarai than Rand is with his sword, Rand could stave him off long enough to get hundreds of weaves involved and take Matt down, there's not much of a competition there, so when it comes to a fight, Rand takes the point once again. Right, I'll do you for that! And now we have the tiebreaker. That really, really does not matter this time. I guess I could say that if they switched roles, and Matt was born as the Dragon Reborn, and Rand was born as the one with the luck factor, once again, this would not matter much though we would get a very different series, and the final conflict with the Dark Wood would probably go down much differently. Much, much differently. That's a, that's a rewriting of the Wheel of Time that I think we all need and deserve. I'm, I'm very interested in that. But that's pretty much my matchup between these two. I'll call the last point a, a wash, officially. Alright, we call it a draw.
I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's probably the most fun I've had making a video, period. Maybe since I was doing the summaries of the Wheel of Time, but I, I really loved doing this one. It was really great to do. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe if you've not already. Hit the Patreon if you want to support the channel and what I do here. And, uh, have a great day, y'all. Peace.